When it comes to Power Rangers crossovers, there's sometimes really good ones and sometimes really, really bad ones. But which one's the best? Let's talk about it. Yo, what's up everybody? Testa here. Welcome back to the video and I'm so excited for this video because today we'll be talking about Forever Red, which is supposedly, according to the fans, the best Power Rangers crossover of all time. 500 likes and maybe I'll do more crossover reviews. Who know? Once a Ranger next? I don't know. You tell me. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Forever Red is the 34th episode of Power Rangers Wild Force, which at the time was the 10th season of Power Rangers. This episode celebrates the 10th anniversary of the start of this franchise, that being Mighty Morphin Power Rangers back in 1993. In Super Sentai, Wild Force's equivalent, Gal Ranger, is the 25th season of the Super Sentai series, and they celebrated with the special Gal Ranger vs Super Sentai, which had the Gal Rangers being taught by a team of 5 Sentai heroes. Now, Wild Force did their celebration a little bit differently, choosing not to adapt this special and using their own footage and story. Well, of course, you know, Super Sentai had their own thing when the Red Ranger showed up, but this is, this is different. This is different. Trust, trust me. This episode sees the return of nine previous Red Rangers who team up with Cole, the Red Wild Force Ranger, to destroy the Machine Empire. That's right. All the Red Rangers come back, except Rocky, who's, I think, dealing with his arcade addiction still at this point. I don't know. Albeit, there's also multiple inconsistencies and contradictions to the canon, but who cares? This is Power Rangers. Who cares? It's just the TV show. Stop caring. Here's a quick synopsis for you. General Vengex, not to be confused with, you know, the one who actually destroyed the world, is a servant of King Mondo from Power Rangers Zeo, who's seeking to destroy the Power Rangers and carry on King Mondo's legacy. Andros, the Red Space Ranger, discovers Vengex and remnants of Mondo's empire who are preparing to invade Earth and alerts a previous Red Ranger, Tommy Oliver, on what's about to unfold. Tommy then recruits all of the former Red Rangers, as well as the Red Wild Force Ranger, Cole Evans, to make a daring trip to the Machine Empire's hideout on the moon and stop them once and for all. Now, I got a list of everything that makes this episode really cool and really special. But before I talk about that, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell. You don't want to miss any single one of my future videos because a big percentage of you is not subscribed. So, subscribe today. You can always unsubscribe later. Now, we start off this episode with the return of Bulk and Skull. If you don't remember, Bulk and Skull is the comedic duo in Power Rangers and probably one of the most popular non-Ranger characters. Would you guys like to see Bulk and Skull Lenny collection? <laughs> Very interesting. They own like a beach club now. It's super cool. They had one scene super funny it was glad to see them back also every red ranger has a very cool and special and just overall awesome entrance in this episode cole of course being the newbie you know being the wild force team and all he's the one with the most energy he's the new guy you know he's ready to to take him down carter is the recruiter basically and is he's the one that introduces cole to all the previous red rangers shout out carter there's also wesley and eric who are presented as old friends of cole of course, having fought together in a previous team-up episode between both the Wild and Time Forces. There was also TJ, who, you know what? They just showed TJ as being the coolest Red Ranger. He just has a cool car. TJ is probably one of the coolest Red Rangers, though. Shout out TJ for the one time. Then, of course, there's Andros, who is the brains of this operation. He was the one that saw the Machine Empire doing their stuff on the moon, the one who contacted Tommy, the one who gave the transport. He also has the coolest Power Rangers transport item, that is the galaxy glider. Did anybody else at home want a galaxy glider of their own just so they can go around space or whatnot? Just me? Okay. There was, of course, Tommy, also, who is the leader of the group, being very passionate and courageous about this mission. Overall, super serious. Why was Tommy so serious? He's like, guys, this is a very serious mission. You know, we may not make it back, so you can either come with me or not, but this is a real mission to save Earth. Like, damn, chill! Chill, you destroyed the Machine Empire, you can do it again! And then of course there was Jason, the original Red Ranger who shows up all cool in his motorcycle, nonchalant, you know, old timer. He's like, you know you can't do this without the original Red Ranger, right? Like, goddamn, Jason. He was a savage in this episode. Of course, both Leo and Arco, the Red Galaxy and Red Alien Ranger, of course, appear in this episode, but they didn't really get a lot of screen time. 
Leo did get his Ocene, where we saw him get his Quasar Saber back. And of course, we saw both of them save Cole later on in the episode in Leo's Galaxy Glider. I'm sorry, not the Galaxy Glider, the Jet Jammer, which first of all, way cooler name. And also, Jet Jammer is like the Galaxy Glider, but cooler? You can drive it or something like that? I don't know. Shout out Lost Galaxy for the one time. Other cool stuff in this episode was the Machine Empire speech who they were talking about how the Rangers scared them into hiding and they wanted to get revenge for King Mondo. They even have a statue for King Mondo. King Mondo was a straight up pimp in the Machine Empire. I guess that's how cool he was. There was the unmorphed fight sequence which basically showed off all the fighting skills of all the Red Rangers, the choreography, mwah, amazing, brilliant. Carr just had a blaster. He was just shooting them up. You know, that's cool. Shout out to Carter. You know, if you have a blaster, use it. And of course, there was the iconic morph sequence that was timed to the dot with the score and everything with the explosion. Mwah, 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 mwah. Amazing. Each Red Ranger had their own time to shine, their own individual morph sequence. They did an insta morph. All their morph sequence happened. Everyone had their moment, and it was just amazing. Next up, we had the duo morph battles, which basically the Red Rangers come up in pairs. Very original. Sometimes. I'd be like, it's pretty cool seeing two Rangers from two different teams team up like this. Let me tell you. We had Wild Force and MMPR, obvious. New versus old. But we had some really cool ones also. Like Time Force Red and Zeo Red. Quantum Ranger and Red Alien Ranger. Red Turbo Ranger and Red Galaxy Ranger. And In Space Red and Lightspeed Red. So cool. So, 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 so cool. And the camera effects, so cheesy, so matrixy. But I love them. The choreography, amazing. It's so well done for Power Rangers. This is Power Rangers, of course. Let's let's not get our hopes too high, but still, amazing choreography. The final space battle with Serpentera was also really cool, albeit horrible CGI, but whatever, who cares? The final fist bump at the end and the final scene where all the Rangers are bonding together. You know, talking about, oh, I'm the best Ranger. Tommy's not the best Ranger. It's me, I did this, I did that. It was so cool. This whole episode was literally so serious until that last minute, 30 seconds, where everyone's just laughing, having a good time. It was really good payoff for what happened in this episode. Now, this episode did a pretty good job of just this whole fight in general. This episode was 20 minutes long, and they fit so much. The final battle was four minutes long. Pretty cool, pretty well paced. There was also a Serpentera battle at the end, which of course Serpentera, Lord Zed Zord from MMPR returns as a CGI thing, and... Cole had to use his Wild Force Rider, which, you know, Bandai pushed Saban, uh, Disney, whoever, to use it because they had a toy, they had to promote it, so they had to use the Wild Force Rider. It was crazy. We could have had a whole Red Ranger Zord battle, but nope, we had to have the Wild Force Rider. But it's cool. Cole literally sacrificed himself just casually to save the world. It worked, I guess. A cool thing also is that each of the Machine Empire in this episode were big bad beetleborg costumes it's really weird general vengex used shadowborg Tez tesla tesla not to be confused with tesla no elon musk was ladyborg garak uses green hunter borg automon uses both fireborg and lightning board and Steelon uses dragon board and another really cool thing is that all these villains are voiced by old power rangers alumni archie cow who played kai chen voiced vengex Walter Jones, who played Zach Taylor, voicing Garak. Catherine Sutherland, who played Catherine Hillard, voiced Tesla. And Scott Page Pactor, who played Porta and Piranha's Head, voiced Steflon. And Dave Walsh, who voiced the Blue Centurion, voiced Ottoman. But besides the Red Rangers, we also had multiple references to other Power Ranger stuff amongst the franchise. Such as Alpha 7, who would casually drop there, had a line or two, you know. He had the voice of Alpha 5 and the personality, body of Alpha 6 head of alpha 5 it was cool i love alpha shout out alpha there was also the astro mega ship mark 2 casually dropped in there also it's a new ship big ship cool i guess and there was also references to the psycho rangers the dragon zord the q-rex kimberly everything it was super cool and then of course we had the phrase more phenomenal which is the most embarrassing thing somebody could ever say but overall this episode was super 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 cool I feel bad for the Wild Force Rangers. They literally had no lines in this episode. They just stood there and just watched Cole go off with Carter to save the world on the moon and whatnot. What were they doing down Earth? I don't know. But hey, that's it for today's video. Forever Red is just so awesome. You know, I love it. If we smash the like goal, I'll review Once a Ranger. Who knows what's next? Hey, shout out Red Rangers. I had to wear my red shirt for the one time. What do you guys think of Forever Red? Seriously, let me know in the comments down below. Follow me on Twitter, the Don Fuego, Instagram, not Don Fuego. I'm also on TikTok. 
also that you don't find on TikTok. Sometimes I post TikToks. You know, gotta get with the trends. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love you guys so much. So much love, y'all. So much love. Shout out Forever Red. Shout out Red Rangers. And shout out Power Rangers. All right. That's it for today's video. I'm gonna stay. Have a great day. And of course, and as always, stay awesome, everybody.